Alrighty, so we are uh, finally back in action. Going to do another battle report, and this is going to be um, our first uh, seventh edition game. I've, I've got basically a half of one in, and then uh, my buddy here, I don't think, has played one yet. So, still a little bit new. Um, so, you know, still learning the rules, but um, that's kind of basically about it. So, the uh, table is this kind of city fight table. We're going to use the rules for um, like all the buildings that are from the book. So any of the gray buildings here, here are the ones that you can, um, I think here, back over there, where you can re-roll mysterious objectives. Then we have the Mechanicum uh, buildings. Um, then any of the blue ones are going to be the ones that give you the adamantium will and um, uh, night vision. Um, and then we'll use the uh, shrine's ability for that one. So we are going to play a maelstrom mission. So we're going to try it out. So it's deadlock. Um, that's the one uh, you can kind of see what the deployment is. Uh, that's the one where the you get six tactical cards uh, first turn and then you know sixth turn you can only have one. Uh, we know I know that you need to use two decks. We're just going to use one for right now, so we'll kind of see how that works. Uh, we don't have two decks. Don't feel like rolling. Um, and then that's kind of about it. So we place all the objectives. So in uh, there is an objective here next, which is two. And we're just going to play this as just kind of a statue that gives cover um, behind it. Uh, pretty much everything will be like a ruin. It'll give four up cover um, behind it. So th this would be behind them. Um, over here would be behind that. Everything else that's ruins would be if you're in there. Um, so anyway, so that's number two. Um, up top up here is number three. Uh, in the very middle is number six. Um, up on top of this kind of mausoleum thing, uh, that's a one, that's objective one in front of the shrine is five. And dude, that's awesome because that's a fallen right there in front of the shrine. <laughs> We're going to hunt him down. And then uh, where's the other one? So over here, which is four. So I believe that's all of them. Uh, so my opponent went... Uh, deployed first he basically deployed a bastion of his and then he has Codiez, um a level two psyker and um, a devastator squad up on the top looks like with two las cannons a multi melta and a plasma cannon okay <laughs> and it has the icarus uh, las cannon on there there's a librarian and a librarian up there too. So the librarian has, uh, let's see, I'm just, this is just kind of my real quick notes. Librarian has forewarning, pre, uh, precognition, and the primaris pyrus of prescience. The uh, primaris psyker has forewarning, skyers grays, and um, the prescience. He's and then, the yeah, and then uh, Codias has. Uh, Pre, uh, prescience and then he rolled uh, for crush telekinesis so um, he's taken basically uh, uh, Imperial Guard that's your main yep. um, Space Marines Iron Hands yep. yeah as as a second and then just adding a uh, to it so in there we have what's on top in the inside is five, five, five tactical guys with the primary psyker. Um, he has a vulture. He has three uh, veteran squads in Valkyries, right? Um, Pask with uh, another one Lehman Russ. So, as, and that's your warlord. Um, and that is, uh, and there have punishers. And then anything else? That's it? Yeah, and then I got a five man. Squad with a tech marine and a razorback. Oh, okay. Oh, right. So you need to um, also uh, uh, fortify one of those, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. So figure that out. And then, so over here, this is what I'm bringing. 
So as soon as I saw that there was no reserve limit, I instantly thought about uh, my Deathwing. So basically I have um, five uh, troop choices. Um, these are shooty with a, an assault cannon and a chain fist, same thing here. Um, thunder hammers and um, missile launcher, chain fist, same thing there. Um, I'm going by that, you know, we kind of always played it that the sergeant can have that, um, the thunder hammers. Then over here I got um, a shooty unit with a um, cyclone missile launcher. I then have a five-man uh, command squad with the banner of um, fortitude, so it's one that gives feel no pain. Uh, some storm shields. I have the um, champion chain fist. I have Belial with his uh, just sword and the gun, and then um, I have a veteran or a, a vulnerable dreadnought with uh, all the works, Heavy Flamer, and then um, Multi Melta, and then a Drop Pod, and I took the Deathwing Launcher on that, so. Um, so I know my, what's your Warlord trait? Oh, his is the preferred enemy yeah, one, so. Um, and that's it, so he decided to go first. Um, I'm trying to think about if I want to seize the initiative or not, and kind of what's, uh, what's going on, so, all right. Okay, so, um, end of turn one. Holy shit. Uh, dude, it was kind of crazy. First of all, I tried to seize the initiative. I got a six, um, which was looking good. And um, Cody has made me re-roll it. So, uh, good for him. Um, yeah. And the thing that I realized about the Deathwing now, too, is uh, the old rules, it was, well, the current rule says after you deploy or uh, get your warlord trait, you choose uh, what turn you want to come in. And um, the interesting thing now is like you determine your warlord trait right um, before you deploy. Um, so now, like right before I deploy, I could decide if I'm going to come in first turn or second turn, uh, which is pretty crazy. So that's that's good. Um, I like that. I was thinking about the Warlord and uh, not making him because he has such a shitty Warlord trait. Um, I was going to make my champion the Warlord to try to uh, roll on those tactical or the strategic ones. Um, but I just couldn't do it, man. One wound model, I just, he, uh, just I'm already going to be kind of under the gun a little bit. So I just kept with him. Uh, so my first things that I rolled, I got uh, Domination. Uh, blood and guts, or excuse me, uh, I got two secure objective fours, and then I got Kingslayer um, Recon. So, not bad. Um, we're also playing a rule here where basically, if you got something like if you got the one with flyers, and I don't, I don't have any flyers, we're just gonna automatically redraw that one. So, um, so let's go on to first turn, and then I'll go over his uh, stuff too. So. First turn, well, let's do this right now. So this one was one that he got, which is uh, Hungry for Glory. I think that's a challenge, which he's probably not going to do. He got uh, Secure Objective 5, No Prisoners, Secure Objective 2, Secure Objective 2, and, and then he uh, Secure Objective 5 again, so he has two of those. And then Secure Objective 1 is what he uh, got when he redrew at the end of his turn. So, he had the option to try to get two, and he would have got two points, but uh, that would have left him out in the open, so he decided not to do it. So, what he ended up starting to do is he cast Prescience first from the Librarian um, on the unit on the top there, and um, it, uh, it went off, but he periled. Um, he made his leadership check, he rolled a one, and he suffered a wound, so um, if he didn't, like all those guys would have took wounds and stuff, would have been pretty brutal. And he threw five dice, so um, so then he had the prim Primaris Psyker on the inside, and he really wanted to get the um, Scryer's Gaze off to help with his reserves. Um, and uh, it went off, 
he periled and lost a wound, killed himself. So he threw five dice also too. So, uh, yeah, and he was thinking about making his primaris his warlord too. That's crazy. Um, okay, so we're going on to death moon. Alrighty, so end of uh, Deathwing turn one. Um, so everything came in. So let's see here. So first off, um, I was trying to, that's objective four over there. And I was trying to um, land close over there. Totally forgot about Kodia's ability to uh, like shoot at anything at uh, a, a four or excuse me, anything within uh, 12 inches. So I landed over here, it was in the 12 inches, he fired at him, killed two of my guys. So the next thing, I was a little bit more leeway, so I kind of landed over there. I was trying to get close so I could maybe run and get it, but I ended up scattering over there. Um, so then the next unit I brought in was uh, over here, and they scattered over there, made all my dangerous train checks. The next one, I decided to kind of land over here, which is a, a shooty unit, um, and they uh, landed just fine. Um, that ended up being Mysterious Objective 1, so it didn't go off, it's the bomb. Uh, next thing here, these guys landed, um, did okay, and then I placed um, a Belial's unit here with the banner uh, right there in the middle, so everybody's within 12 inch range. And then um, landed this thing here. It ended up moving closer to Kotia, so he fired on the drop pod, um, put two hole points on it, and stunned it so I couldn't fire my uh, Deathwing launcher. And then the Dreadnought he fired on did two glancing hits, uh, even with the cover save and everything behind there. So um, that's kind of about it. Uh, let's see. I ended up firing this at the building first and uh, hit it, but I made a cover save from shooting through my own model, so that was uh, good. Ended up firing here on those guys, um, killed a couple guys. It, combined shooting, what I ended up doing is I ended up killing um, all the, the heavy weapon guys in the Devastator squad. There's just the sergeant left, and then Kodias. Kodias has one wound. Um, and then I killed the librarian for first blood. Um, and the only other thing is these guys didn't have any range or line of sight, so they just kind of ran. They're actually hiding. There's no real uh, line of sight over there, so they're kind of hiding behind that building. So we're going to wait for his reserve rolls and see what's going on. Um, I did not get any uh, tactical objectives. I did redraw one and I got the demolitions which I can destroy a building um, which should be easy because he's got one and um, that's it so go from there. Alright end of turn two for um, the Imperial Allies we'll just call them over there and uh, so let's see, two vendettas came in from reserve, the vulture came in, um, and past uh, came in. So uh, this vendetta went here, da da da, the vulture there, that vendetta came there, past unit came over there. Um, the unit was, that was inside grab shooted in there and scattered a little bit, landed over there. Um, and then eventually ended up running over there and that's objective five so it um, which he had two cards for that he ended up getting two points um, for that that ended up becoming a bomb um, it did not go off last turn so uh, this proceeded to fire at these guys killed one of them um, they, they have the missile pods on there too and las cannon so um, oh, we need to see if that, I'll double check to see if that one went off too. Um, passed and fired, uh, ended up firing on these guys over here. Killed three of them. Uh, Pask is pretty nuts with uh, the his warlord trait and then uh, rending. And he only got one rending, which is interesting. I mean, but um, it's, that was pretty brutal. 
Um, the Vulture, which ended up getting the MVP, killed off the last three guys that were there. Um, and that got him a point. He had a card uh, to do that. So this turn, he actually had three points. Um, the five-man tactical squad that was inside the Bastion kind of moved out. They fired on uh, the melt gun on him, didn't do anything. Uh, Codiez moved down one into there, uh, fire, tried to do crush on him, and uh, didn't end up, uh, went off, everything was okay, um, didn't end up uh, doing a, a glance or a pin to him. And then uh, there is still one guy on the top there that's left. And that's it. So um, I have a, a card where I'm trying to uncover all the um, mysterious objectives. So I think I might be able to do that this turn. Uh, we'll have to see. So, um, alrighty. Okay, thanks. Okay, so. Um, this is the end of turn two for Deathwing, so let's see what happened. Um, so I was able to uncover all the uh, mysterious objectives, which was good. So these guys had ran up, uh, did that one. That's a blow up thing, so I'll have to see if that one actually uh, blows up again. Oh, yeah. we'll double, so we'll double check on any of the blow up ones too. Um, Let's see, so uh, he moved up over here, fired on that, uh, didn't really do anything. He ended up assaulting it and um, ended up uh, destroying it and killing the guy that was on the top and killing Kotia's, which was inside. So total, that thing got me um, demolitions for killing a building, so I got one point for that. And then I got... Um, I got one, and I got this, I actually killed three units, so I rolled a D3, I still only got one. Um, because the bastions, if a fortification or a building that's claimed is considered a unit by that uh, player, so that would be one. And then I got recon, so everything kind of moved up, these guys were able to move up, uh, they fired at the flyer, couldn't do anything. He moved over just to kind of stay within range for feel no pain. I tried to get those guys to run over and hopefully get to that so I could do my other uh, claim four um, tactical cards, but couldn't get it. So uh, that's going to be a rough one. Uh, these guys uh, had to run, but they, with their run move, they were able to uncover that objective. So um, I got four tactical objectives and I got one for first blood. And then how many do you have? Three. So three. So. Uh, pretty good so far. All right. Okay, so end of um, the Imperials allies turn three. So a uh, couple things. So he drew some more cards. Um, objective six, objective six, and then objective one. Um, uh, over this turn, he, had, he wasn't able to get any. Um, and then he discarded one that he had uh, from earlier. So, um, let's see, uh, Pask and those, that's actually both Punishers, um, just don't have it modeled right there. But shot at my two uh, Deathwing that were there, ended up killing them. Um, so which good, kept me from getting uh, Objective 4, which is right there. Uh, those guys just moved over and ran that way. Uh, this finally came on, um, and it fired onto the Dreadnought, which was there, and killed it. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, those guys over there kind of moved into that shrine building, and then ran a little bit, uh, trying to get a line breaker type deal. Um, and then uh, that shot at those four guys, and I think... Uh, made my saves, which was lucky. The, these guys uh, basically deep striked out of, used the grab shoot out of there, landed basically in the, that corner right there, and then ran and um, only ran two. So what he was trying to do is get objective six. He had two cards to do that, so uh, just didn't quite work out. And then uh, he fired on those guys and uh, made my saves. The uh, Vulture fired on those guys, and I lost one guy, so uh, holding on, 
and uh, we'll go from there. So, so end of Dark Angels turn three, and uh, not too eventful. So, I had I drew um, overwhelming firepower, which I should have been able to do, and I did not. And then uh, big game hunter, and I did not do that either. So. Um, so let's see, these guys just kind of moved up and over a little bit. I wanted to fire, start wooden on those guys, killed two of them. Um, these guys moved through cover over into this area, um, so they can be in line of sight to shoot at the uh, squad that was there, the veterans. Uh, they ended up shooting at them. Um, in combination, these guys shot at them, had a heavy flamer, killed quite a few. Um, and then went to go do some charges. Um, these guys made the charge, ended up killing them. Well, double ones for those guys. And so they just ended up staying there. Um, back out here, uh, the, the drop pod was out of range to do anything. Um, and then these guys had moved up, trying to get objective four once again. They ended up, they fired on the tactical squads that were there. Um, killed one, they failed their morale check, and then went back six inches. So, um, that's it. So we're going to turn four. Okay, so end of turn four. Um, for the Imperial Allies, and let's see what they did. So, the um, guys just kind of hung out over there. Those guys just chilled. Oh, he uh, fired at the uh, uh, drop pod and blew it up. Um, that came in and uh, fired. Didn't really do anything on uh, any of those guys. But the guys underneath uh, did shoot and they fired. Ended up putting a, killing one uh, guy there with a storm shield and then putting two wounds on Belial, so it was close. Uh, the Vulture ended up moving over, it has Vector Dancer so it can move again, and ended up firing on them. This was clutch, dude. Did a nine wounds, made all but two, so the Banner was the closest. He had to make Feel No Pains and he made both of them, so whew, lucky. And then um, Pask and the unit just annihilated. Pask pretty much by himself just killed all those guys that were there, so um, I even had a four up cover from being around there and then plus one cover for the, uh, the serious objective and just, uh, just died a bunch of rending hits and everything. So that's it. Uh, those guys over there are running. Uh, so they pretty much got line breaker over there. So, um, okay, that's it. And just to follow up, so no other uh, tactical objectives were uh, got on that turn. So he has he had two to secure six, and then he had one to secure uh, number one, and neither of those were were done. Okay, so in really quick turn. So that w I have three units left, basically. Um, well, four with Belial, but. Um, so my three cards that I had left was secure objective four twice, and then um, I had a completely kill unit uh, by shooting at it. So um, through moving and then running, I was able to secure that objective, um, which uh, got me two points. And then I was able to kind of combine a heavy flamer and then shooting at that unit and kill it out. So. Um, that's it. The, the two cards that he had left were to cure six. So we, we're calling it because I now have eight points. I would have nine with line breaker. Um, and then he has three points. So well, four with there. So, and with the objectives going less and less, you know, basically we have having two and then we're having one, you know, it'd be, uh, it'd be tough to kind of go through. So overall, it's fun. What'd you think? Yeah. So, you know, I liked it. The objectives got a little bit you gotta, crazy. You gotta be mobile. Yeah, you have to be mobile. Um, the thing that was interesting that I, I think the take on this is like, in a sixth edition game, 
this list with like flyers and everything would just wreak havoc you know because of um, what we do with these cards and how it was um, because they can't necessarily claim anything and that's a lot of points you know that that sometimes uh, uh, it, it kind of evened it out you know they were still murdering stuff but and I think the the Valkyrie being um, 10 and then the uh, Vendetta being a transport of capacity of six was huge yeah. because if those if those were uh, vendettas it'd be all over you know because that would be that would have made a big difference um, and then what I you know trying to do is like I guess with this deathwing list is if I could place the objectives this you know this way here it helps me out you know um, so I guess the thing to do versus it is kind of like really you know place the objectives all over the place um, which would help but it was fun it was it was good so um